To use the GI Photon Map feature in Brazil for Rhino, first go into the Simple Photon Map panel of the Brazil Settings dialog and turn on GI Photons. Next, in the Simple Luma Server panel, turn on Indirect Illumination. And the third step will be to set up a light source and turn on photons for that light source. In this tutorial, I'm using the Rhino 5 Beta, which is out right now. Because it has real-time shadows in the viewport, I can use that feature to align the sun without doing a test rendering. So from the Render drop-down menu, I'm going to click on Show Sun Settings, turn on the sun, and you can see the sunlight passing through the window and the shadows from the window frame. I'm going to turn on Manual Control for the sun and swing the sun around until it bounces off of the far wall. And that's what I'm going for, so I'll stop right there. Next, in the settings for the sun, I'll enable the photons, and then click OK. Now, everything else in the settings has been left as a default, so I'll click Render and see what our result will be. We can see the sunlight passing through the window, and it lines up with what we got as the real-time preview in the Rhino 5 beta. But the scene is too dark, and we're definitely not seeing any of the wall or corner of the room illuminated, which is really the purpose of using the GI Photon Map. So I'm going to go back to the Photon Map panel and click on Show Detailed Controls. Tweaking the settings in the detailed controls for the Photon Map is almost always necessary, and it's highly dependent on the size of the room that the light is bouncing around in. So for max search radius, I typically like to set this to be the height of the room. So this room has 20 foot ceiling, so I'll type in 20 there. And the result was too dark, so the best ways to make the scene brighter are to increase diffuse depth, so I'll turn that to 6, and also to increase the multiplier value in the energy tweaks section. So I'm going to change that to 3. And I'll click Render again. Now the scene is still too dark, so if I've inc increased the diffuse depth and I've also increased the multiplier and the scene is still too dark, the next thing to do is to go to the settings for the object, the light object that has the photons turned on, in this case the sun, and increase the multiplier value for the sun, but also increase the power of the photons coming out of that light object, and then render again. And now we're starting to see light bounce around in the scene. So I'm going to tweak the settings in the Photon Map panel a little bit more to try and get rid of these splotches here, and also to try and get the light to fall further along this wall here. So I'll increase the max search radius to 30, and I'll raise the photons in estimate to 200. Photons in estimate the higher the number this this is, the smoother it'll look, uh, but you'll lose contrast at a certain point. So it's really a balancing act uh, between getting rid of splotches but maintaining contrast. And I'll do another test render. And it's looking pretty good, but I think I'm going to raise the multiplier value for the photon map one more point. Let's go down here and raise this to 4 and render again. Now another way that you can make the scene brighter, and I use this uh, from time to time, is to change the gamma value in the photon map section. So the gamma by default is set at 1, and that's right here. If you raise this to somewhere between uh, 1.5 and 2.2, you'll brighten up the scene. And in some cases, it can be uh, exactly the amount that you want. Um, so this is looking pretty good here. Now this room is, is bright, it's inviting, uh, the light is bouncing around. So. We still have splotches on the walls. So after you get to this point, um, 
the best thing to do is to regather the photon map. And that will get rid of the final splotches, uh, but it'll take, um, it'll take more time than using just the photon map by itself. Uh, so before I regather and do our final rendering, I'd like to add um, a detail to the sun here. So I'd like the shadows to get blurry as they fall away from the window so it looks more realistic. So we're going to change the way that the shadows work in the sun settings. So I'll go into the settings for the sun and turn on, instead of integrated ray shadows, which is the default, I'll turn on Brazil 2 ray shadows. And when you do that, you get this Brazil 2 ray shadows section in the settings for the sun. And from the mode dropdown, I'll choose disk area. And the diameter for the disk is going to determine how blurry the shadow looks. Um, so the larger the number, the more blurry it will be. And I'm going to change that to 2 instead of 5. Say OK. And do another test render. And you can see here the sun, the shadows from the window frame produced by the sun start to blur as it gets further and further away. So the shadows are tighter here and blurrier as they get further down the wall. And that same effect is going to be seen on the floor. And that little change in uh, shadow quality or shadow style is going to make this look like a, a, more like a photograph and less like a rendering. OK, so for the final render here, I'm going to go back up to the Luma server. And to regather the photon map, we'll need to show detailed controls. And the G photon map checkbox here is turned on when you turn on GI photon maps in the photon map panel. But the regather box is only located in the Luma server. So you'll need to show detailed controls and check regather. Now what regather does for the photon map is it uses this sample rate in the global illumination section. Uh, so the higher the number, uh, the less grainy it will look. For an interior rendering, typically this is going to be something between 15 and uh, 20. And don't worry about changing the bounces field. Uh, you're doing all of your bounces with the photon map. And then up in anti-aliasing, since I was on the low setting, I'm going to change this to be a min of 0 and a max of 2. And then I'll do a final render. And I'll pause this video tutorial while this rendering completes. And here is our final rendering. This rendering was calculated on a laptop computer and took roughly 1 hour and 45 minutes. On a faster machine, preferably a workstation or server type setup, this would calculate much, much quicker. The other option for you in terms of speed will be using the render cache in Brazil for Rhino. My favorite settings for those would be no enhancement at a min and max shader rate of 0 and 0, or the retrace render cache matching the sample rate to what you set for the regathering in the Luma server. And that's how to set up an interior rendering using a GI photon map in Brazil for Rhino.